Hello everybody, how are you all doing today, baby whales? It's now March the 22nd, it's Thursday at about 6 p.m. Central Standard Time, and we're going to talk about Litecoin. I actually did a live stream already for Litecoin, but you know what I realized? Sometimes I'm a little bit too immature, and that's me saying that. And sometimes I'm a little bit too unprofessional as well. So let's actually try this technical analysis for Litecoin again and and keep it much more professional and mature as well right sometimes um you guys are a great audience you guys have no idea how much i appreciate the love and the support and what you guys provide for me you guys provide a lot of entertainment you guys provide a lot of feedback as well and we kind of uh, we we react to each other right it's kind of like um you're doing a performance and you're reacting to the crowd so because we're kind of um we we're all in crypto to have fun right but because we're all in crypto to have fun and for the profit, which is a great bonus, sometimes I can get a little bit too riled up when I'm doing a live stream. So I'm actually going to try much harder to not live stream as much. And and um, this way I can actually retain some sort of, you know, somewhat professional of an image, right? You don't always want to be seen as some someone who's immature and just saying a bunch of random things. So here's me trying the technical analysis again, round two, guys. For you guys, for the people that have missed it. So coin market cap. What I always recommend to people is to check out coin market cap. It's definitely one of the most it's the best place to, to go to on a daily uh, schedule because then you can get a gauge of how the general market is. And the general market sentiment right now is bearish, but recovering from a possible bounce. We look at all of the graphs and we can see them pretty much all the same, right? EOS is the one that's been doing incredibly well, in my opinion. NEO is kind of hurting a little bit. Stellar is really hurting as well right now, right? We take a look at Ripple. Ripple is definitely bouncing pretty well. It's kind of coinciding with Big Brother Bitcoin there. So we just kind of get a good gauge of what's going on. Litecoin will always be number five. I cannot see it being overtaken or overtaking any coin right now. So I see Litecoin as a hard number five for a while. We take a look at the 24 hour volume and what worries me the most about litecoin is the volume it's not really picking up in fact since the march 18th uptrend we ended up downtrending quite a bit 595 504 492 462 and now the daily candle is just about to close with about four minutes left to go and we've dropped a significant amount so we've got to ask ourselves is this a very slow sell-off what is going on so quick review for everything that's been going on thus far is this is pretty much what I would consider this, right? We'd call this an ABC with an X wave failure and then we get an ABC or sorry, we get a three wave structure down to over here, which makes the B and then we get a one, two, three, four and five, like a double bottom over here. So this tends to fit my personal structure very well. and. Let's get a gauge of what's going on in the market from a candlestick analysis and also trend lines as well to see how this is looking. What we see on the daily chart is a possible MACD crossover happening soon. But notice right here, that's where we're getting resistance, right? If, if, we, if we notice here, we almost got a MACD crossover. Uh, where was that guy? We almost got to the positive side on the histogram. But then we didn't get to the positive side in the histogram and it ended up downtrending. So this here was like a fake out where it looked like it was about to cross over, but it didn't quite. So sometimes crossovers can actually be fictitious in terms of faking you out, right? So the way I'm seeing this right now is we are definitely getting some sort of bullish divergence, but because it's a higher high anyways, of course, we're going to get some sort of bullish divergence, right? But what we see is it's trending in this type of particular pattern right now on the daily RSI. The moment that we break this RSI range, that's the moment we're gonna become fairly bullish in my opinion, okay? Make sure that you're always drawing your supports and your resistances with your RSI supports and resistances. So would you guys agree that that's a very relevant way to be drawing it? And perhaps something like that as well, right? It's forming some sort of channel so what we can easily conclude based on our side analysis is something will actually happen in between right here as soon as it breaks out of this region whether it is down or whether it is up there will be a significant play that is going to happen very soon in the market let me actually get my 100 moving average on here for the people that don't know 
go to your EMA over here. Okay, click on your indicator tab right there. It's called indicators. Type in EMA and it's called moving average exponential. Click on it one time. Zoom in very close so you can see it. It will usually be a purple line like that. Double click on the purple line. Change the length to whatever you prefer. Here, I'm putting in 100. Move it up, move, move the thickness of it and change it to a color that you prefer. And you have white like that. And I just want to save my chart to make sure that these are here. Alrighty. I pay for the TradingView Pro. I find that it's actually incredible. I could not live without Pro, trust me guys. It's definitely one of the things I need to have. Um, and it didn't even save. Did you guys notice that? That's a, that's a little bit funny how it didn't save like that, okay? So we're going to do that again very quickly. Sometimes they just simply don't tr don't load like that, right? Okay, there we go. And let's get this to 100 moving average right here. So what we see on a daily chart is that the RSI, we talked about the pattern, we talked about the possible crossover. But if we look at the candle right here, yesterday's daily close, what we notice about it as actually let's check to see exchange time actually there's one more hour until the candle closes my mistake there yesterday's candle ended up finishing with a shooting star which signaled to the market that it's time to take some profit and profit taking were done lots of people ended up taking profit and today's candle is a fairly bearish candle it's called a bearish spinning top and when you get these series of candles with rejection it usually can signal that a slight correction is to come for the next few days. So if we notice right here, we cannot break above $175. Now let me show you guys the significance of this $175 range on a lower time frame. Let's say I went to a 12 hour chart. If you guys notice right here, okay, this is a fairly significant resistance and support zone, right? We see a lot of different breaks that have come down to the downside. So this whole structure right here around the 175 range is very difficult to end up penetrating right now. So Litecoin's having a massive time trying to break this EMA. Now, I wanna also make note of something for you guys here on a log scale. Now, if we take our log scale and we just simply draw something like that right here, what we see is that Litecoin has shot, okay? How, how let, let's say we talk about some similarities and I drew it from this end here from wick to wick do you guys see this pattern that's forming right there okay that's a very relevant pattern to make note of now let's say we actually did it to Bitcoin as well okay if we did the exact same to, thing to Bitcoin from where this end is right here on a long scale what do you guys notice that it's also doing the exact same thing like that right now let's make sure we're actually in log Okay, there we go now it's gonna look a lot better notice how it's forming this support trend line that we kind of figured it would bounce off of but this one was actually formed by by a, a non log scale but it's okay we'll keep it like this for simplicity now let's say we actually drew this as well and connected these points notice that we're about 50% upwards to the top of here and if you look at Litecoin notice that we're also about 50% to there so would it be wise for us to assume that Litecoin could hit around the 182 to 100, we'll say 180 to 182 range? Yeah, it's definitely possible. So based, based on extensions, this could be very well a possible target for us to hit, which will also signal where the 55 and the 200 or the 100 moving average will roughly get to as well. Now, we got to make note that on every single time frame right now, we are considered in a downtrend. Let me show you guys what an uptrend looks like, okay? So, investor strategy, you would actually buy it on a breakout, right? So in September, you would have bought it, for example, when the 55, the 100 moving average was actually below all of it right here, okay? When it was below all of it right here, where the white is supporting it. And then it goes from 100 to 55, to 21 to 13 and then to 8 and then you say to yourself i will not sell it until it looks like this one where the white is actually above now so instead of right here this would be considered a slight uptrend okay white 
50, 100, the bigger numbers on the bottom, and here the bigger numbers are on the top, right? It goes from bigger to smaller, and here it goes from bigger to smaller, going up. Now, investor strategy. You bite on the breakout like that. Simple, okay? You bite on the breakout anywhere along there, and then you say to yourself, I will not sell my position until we have officially confirmed a downtrend by having this white line above the yellow one, okay? So the white line has to be above the yellow one. This is called a crossover strategy. Now, right here, it came close, but you would have held strong there because the 100 moving average is actually supporting it all, okay? Now, you would still be holding. You would still be holding, right? Now, right here, you almost would have sold in panic, but it's actually still holding, okay? It's still holding very well. But what do you guys see right here? That there's a potential for the 100 and the 55 moving average to cross. So when we start to trend in this specific region right here, that is the moment that we are going to be able to figure out what is exactly going on in this structure. Interesting, right? So we have to make sure that we understand this concept of how something is most likely to happen in this specific zone right here. Now the Elliott wave is very difficult to count and it might very well not even be an Elliott wave count instead, right? It might be uh, or it, sorry, I said that completely wrong. It might not make sense right now simply because it, it might be a triangle that I'm not accounting for and, it, and I'm actually thinking it's an uptrend, right, for an impulse wave. So very difficult count in my personal opinion, but if I had to try counting it on a very basic level, I would most likely end up counting it something like this, okay, where there's three, four, and there's going to be one more touch somewhere to you know who knows how it's going to be something something way down over there right far down the road now if i had to guess what could happen it would most likely bounce off of there and come down to here and it'll, it'll eventually break out of symmetric triangle we have to understand the mechanics of a symmetric triangle a symmetric triangle is something like that right or you know it could be like that or it could be like a wedge or whatever but you know triangles in general are complicated patterns where they could break one way or the other, right? Upon here, it can break up or it can break down simply. So the way that I'm seeing the structure, if it was actually an impulse wave up, is like this. We have to remember the rules of Elliott wave that say that wave four cannot retrace into the wave one territory by more than a wick. So if this were actually the first impulse wave up, then this structure right here would basically be Hold on, I'm just trying to count it. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. That's B, and 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. Okay, that makes entire sense right there. And now we are trending to make one more official subwave going upwards, right? Now we don't know where it's going to get to, but we can kind of guess based on Fibonacci extensions, okay? So if I were to do my Fibonacci extensions, right, we would most likely get something right here where, well, if, that's, if this one we'd probably most likely get, I'm guessing, right above, like almost like a double top, I'm guessing, maybe slightly higher. But I really couldn't see it getting higher than, let's go look for a very relevant resistance area. That's our next swing high. Well, right here is a pretty relevant area. That's why we're getting a lot of the resistance, as you guys have noticed already, and we pointed that out, right? So in the next very relevant area, well, right here as well, let's go for a Fibonacci range. Okay, let's go for a Fibonacci range from the entire structure going upwards and let's see if that can offer any type of resistance. If you guys notice here, the 618 level or the 1618 level is also right at the dead cat bounce level at 382. So we got to be incredibly careful about that. Alright, well, let's just go based on Fibonacci extensions. I can't really see it getting higher than perhaps these points again right now around these clusters. So I think that it really can't get much higher guys i think we're gonna break above it slightly like for example in a one hour chart and then we're gonna trend down to a lower amount and it could possibly hit up to 182 i'm guessing so with these rules fit fine right they fit perfectly fine you guys notice how bitcoin's on an uptrend right now it's at 87.27 pretty good right it's bitcoin's looking fantastic for all the people that i've been complaining about it or not complaining, but worried rather. That's a better word. So we say to ourselves that wave four looks like it's crossing over, but if we follow the rules of Elliott wave that says that these crossovers can, or these territory laps can happen, right? Wave four usually does not overlap wave one by more than a wick. 
So if we have to understand, very simply put, that yes, it can overlap in a very highly leveraged market. And of course, Bitcoin is one of those coins that can easily be leveraged to the maximum, like BitMEX, for example, where you can leverage 100 times, for example, right? So by these rules of Elliott Wave, we allow these overlaps to happen in a leveraged market. So please make sure you understand that, that they are absolutely 100% okay to annotate it like that. So now, is it possible that this is a fourth wave count right here, where we're looking at one, two, and this is now one, two, three, four, and five, to make the subwaves like that? Well, yeah, I'd say it's possible, right? Definitely possible. We take our Fibonacci for right here, if it breaks above, and you know, it might even cross over back down to like the 170 ranges, but I think only by a wick where the white moving average could support it. So I don't really know where wave three is actually going to end up. That's not the goal of this particular video. The point of this video is to give you guys just a brief technical analysis to show you that we could possibly end up getting to one of those regions up there, to the 182 region. So right now, Bitcoin is doing incredibly well, if you guys have paid attention, okay? Bitcoin is doing incredibly well, in where it actually rallied quite a bit already. If you guys look at the bounce, it's actually recovered by more than 3% already since the original drop there. Actually, more than that, it's recovered, um, it's recovered over 4% already right now. It's looking very good. Like 4% is a big number for Bitcoin today, okay? So very, very happy for everybody that we're doing very well thus far. So let's get back to Litecoin here. I hope you guys are really understanding the point of this video, which is just to show you that there is, I'm not interested in here, okay? I'm not making a projection for this wave. Under, please understand that. I'm making a projection for this one over here at 182, right? And we, we see Litecoin actually recovering immensely today already as well. Litecoin has recovered about 4% as well. Same thing as Bitcoin, where it pretty much double bottomed out. Makes me pretty happy to see this. Okay, so... Let's take a look at some candles as well now, right? Sorry for moving the mouse like that a lot. We get a very huge bullish engulfing candle, right? The daily is about to close in about one hour, but we're getting a series of tweezer bottoms right here. This is three white soldiers with slowly declining volume. So if we break, and we end up breaking above 165, like these, these reasons, uh, sorry, these regions here, like 166, 167, you know, we just got, basically got a break above this 100 EMA with a lot of volume. So I'm not really concerned about the next wave going upwards. That's not for me, right? I'm concerned about buying it more in a dip. Right now, because I've done the technical analysis a little bit too late, and I didn't buy properly on time before this T8 and during the actual dip, unfortunately, it is too late for me. So I'm sitting now on the sidelines. I'm sitting on the sidelines because I got to wait. I got to wait for a dip. Our side is probably getting pretty high since Bitcoin's on a rally, as you guys can see here, right? Our side is getting really high. So it makes really no sense for me to enter a trade right now when it's completely oversold already. I want to enter it above a key breakout, like above, I don't know, 166, 167, something like that. That's when I'll be extremely interested in it. Now, who knows how high this wave is going to get to, right? Who knows how high? So I'm interested in buying like a wave forward dip, regardless of where that is, where I'm going to try to keep you guys more updated. Right now, I'm a little bit um, lost in because I haven't done a technical analysis on LTC for a few days. So we have to make sure that I get caught up as well so I can provide something much more accurate. So I do believe that we are going to end up uptrending to possibly, at least we're going to test this again, guys. Like I think we're right now, we're most likely going to end up uptrending to 167 range because I think Bitcoin will make a test for at least 9k. So if Bitcoin tests $9,000, it might logically make sense for Bitcoin to also test the $175 region. Now breaking it, that's another story, right? Ideally, what we would like to see is some sort of triangle pattern like that, where if we get a triangle pattern, then very simple. Right, we end up ascending and it's going to be very beautiful and bullish. So, you know, if you guys actually enter a position now, make sure you guys set your stop loss very tight. A stop loss could be something like right here, right? You can target around up there for 6% gain and, you know, still 1.17 risk to reward. We're not going to win every trade, but we try our best. So, I, I personally find the probability of buying on this way forward dip over here, it's going to be a lot more promising and successful, in my opinion. Than perhaps even entering a trade now but that's entirely up to you guys right 
on a 45 minute chart or any chart. We just want to successfully close above the 55 VMA. So here, looks like it's about to successfully close above it, right? It's about to do the crossover strategy, but it's already getting to fairly oversold regions right now. So there's still a little bit of time. Maybe I want to buy on a dip and target the 175 range, but we got to acknowledge and respect Bitcoin because whatever Bitcoin does, these coins kind of tend to follow. So I just want to give you guys my quick projection as to how we could actually get to the um, get to the $182 range. And I'll be sure to provide much more technical analysis from here on in regards to Litecoin and how it's affecting the market. Or sorry, how it's doing in the market rather. So other than that, have yourselves a great day. Thank you very much for all the love and the support that you guys have given me. I would kindly appreciate an upload on Steemit just to show a little bit of support there. Other than that, have yourselves a great day and thank you for everything that you guys do for me. Bye now.